I'm very pleased, Neira, thank you very much, to be joined by the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva. She is here for the Compact with Africa conference. And first of all, thank you so much um, for your time. And why don't we start with that uh, subject? What are your priorities at the IMF in terms of Africa? What are you most focused on right now? Well, Africa is a continent of opportunity. And what we are focusing on is for this opportunity uh, to be harnessed to the maximum. Uh, it is also a continent with many troubles. Therefore, we also have to be very mindful of risks, especially security risks. With the compact with Africa, our focus is on supporting these countries to have sound macroeconomic policies to improve investment climate and to show it to the rest of the world. And what we are seeing, just to speak with numbers, is that this concentrated effort from their side, from our side, is paying off. On average, growth in the 12 compact with Africa countries is 7.4% for the last years. This is almost twice as for the rest of the uh, continent. Uh, and actually on some points more than twice. And how do they do it? By, by looking at that sustainability, when they borrow, borrow for good investment purpose, things that generate a medium long-term uh, growth, and by eliminating red tape for investors, both domestic investors, but of course foreign investors as well. Talking about growth, sustainability, borrowing, a number of countries, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Kenya, they're boosting their budgets for 2020. And I wonder if you're concerned at all that they're increasing their debt loads to unsustainable levels. In some cases, we are concerned about that. And in other cases, we see that investing uh, is going to pay off uh, over, over time. Uh, say, take the uh, case of uh, Kenya. Uh, we do advise Kenya to be somewhat more cautious in building up debt, but we have seen uh, good macroeconomic policies in Kenya. Our program efforts with the country, our engagement with the country, uh, by and large, are judged as uh, positive. Uh, so one has to always remember that on its own is not bad. It is bad when it goes for the wrong things and when it goes with the speed that the economy cannot handle. Uh, so in cases when that, that is uh, dangerous, like take Zambia, we do say you need to really get a handle on your debt. Uh, in other cases, uh, uh, like uh, Ethiopia, we say you do need to renegotiate some of your debt because it is non-concessional for things that should be funded on a concessional basis. Again, it really depends on country uh, circumstances. But to go to the, uh, to the bottom of your question, overall, are we worried about that level C in Africa? Yes, because about 40% of countries have gotten to, to debt distress levels. And this is why in just two weeks in Dakar, we are going to have a very concentrated meeting with African leaders on that issue of debt sustainability. What about uh, debt levels in Latin America? and? Uh, the changing political climate that we're seeing there. Um, a lot of people are starting to talk about an emerging market debt crisis. It's been a while since we've had one. Is that on your radar? Oh, totally, totally on our radar. Uh, let's take the global number of debt. It is really staggering. We now have 230 percent annual GDP globally as a debt level. So we should recognize that a long period of low and sometimes negative interest rates, of course, have generated more propensity to borrow and invest or spend. Uh, and when it is combined with uh, uh, relatively low tax collections uh, in some countries uh, where growth is disappointing, and it has been disappointing this year for sure, then that worry about the sustainability of that goes up. For Latin America, in a number of countries, uh, our engagement is around this question. How can you adapt to a lower growth environment, uh, especially for economies that are more commodities dependent? 
what we have seen in 2019 is that commodity dependent countries are doing actually worse than non-commodity dependent uh, and basically more diversified economies outperform less uh, uh, diversified economies. So everywhere, including in Latin America, the engagement is around uh, don't get too accustomed to low interest rates. Uh, one, even if we now talk about low for longer, uh, there is always a risk that financial conditions may tighten. And uh, think of what you borrow from, even if money is cheap. Taking this for a good investment uh, is, is a priority. And if I may end on what is the one investment that we want countries to make more of, investing in people, investing in human capital. Because of criticality, human capital has for the future digital economy, for, for a future that is so technology dependent. Can I ask on, on uh, Argentina, we still don't know um, the economic plan of the incoming administration. What would be a good plan for the IMF uh, for you to agree to renew the $56 billion Argentinian uh, uh, scheme? We would like to see what the government uh, uh, governance thinking uh, is. We recognize that in Argentina, poverty has gone up. So any plan that the government puts forward ought to be mindful of the impact it would have on the most vulnerable people. In other words, we expect to see strong attention to so social protection. And we are already talking to our colleagues in the World Bank, in the Inter-American Development Bank, of collaborating to support that kind of plan. Of course, they will have to bring that to sustainable level. So they can return to markets. And I would expect that they would be quite keen to discuss with the IMF how they can get uh, there. And last but absolutely not least, uh, the government has to figure out a way to live within uh, budgetary constraints uh, that they exist. And to do so, they need to continue to uh, work on where maybe public expenditures are not delivering good value for the country. Uh, obviously, every country has to look uh, for its own how to do that, and where they have to be more mindful in terms of policies to unleash investments and increase growth. So we are very open to have a discussion around these parameters, the social responsibility of the government. They made, made promises to their people, the viability, the fiscal viability of meeting these uh, promises, and that sustainability potentially returning uh, to, uh, to be able to, to, to go to market. If we look at uh, global growth, though, when you're talking about the concerns you have as far as debt levels, especially in emerging markets, but if we look at the global picture, Aren't you less concerned than you were in October? I mean, we see this sort of peak dovishness of the Fed um, seemingly have passed the ECB as well, Germany narrowly avoiding a contraction. Does it look like the global economy is bottoming out and the next direction is up? This is what we're projecting for next year, a modest upswing in growth this, this year 3% lowest in the last uh, decade, next year 3.4%. Uh, we also say there is quite a heavy cloud of uncertainty hanging over the world economy. And the more c that can be done to reduce uncertainty, especially to reduce trade tensions, hopefully to move from trade truth to trade peace, sustainable, uh, and also the more governments can do to use all the tools they have at their disposal to boost that chance of upswing. And what we are recommending is, if you have monetary policy space, use it. Not many do, but there is still some. Uh, what if a you great have place to have that conversation. Yes, right here in exactly Berlin, here. where this government has fiscal space, and do you think they need to use it as the, as the engine of Europe to drive they growth? Are, they are actually using, using it. I want to say that uh, we have to give credit to the uh, German authorities in the next uh, year budget. They are providing a stimulus. There is a three-quarter of percentage boost. They also came up with a very ambitious climate plan. Bravo, may others follow. Uh, that also would inject uh, a 
in a sense, a stimulus. Last but not least, uh, structural reforms. Improve conditions for competition. Think of the longer term. Think of this investment in people I mentioned before. Think of investing in digital infrastructure, in uh, e-mobility, and do this planning and investment now. Because guess what? The future is coming very fast. Uh, uh, we need to get accustomed to the speed of change. It will never be that slow in the future. And in that context, I think we can reach an upswing, but it would require uh, policy efforts. It's not going to come uh, just falling from the sky. I want to finally ask you your view on negative rates. Mario Draghi at his last meeting said they had a very good experience um, with mm. this experiment. Um, on the other hand, I've heard from a lot, especially from bankers, of course, uh, negative things about negative rates. <laughs> but especially concerning is that they think it's increasing wealth inequality. Mm. Do you see it that way? So the way we see it is uh, we have to recognize at a very gloomy time, accommodative policy helped. It helped uh, with uh, employment. Look at the employment in Germany. It helped with growth everywhere. But when it goes for a prolonged period of time, the inevitable risks start compounding. And there are basically three. One is profitability of banks being affected then banks look for other ways to generate yield. Two, we see equities going up. Uh, that requires prudential measures, especially retail as in, in the housing market, to protect it from a, from a bubble. Three, the accum accumulation of high yield, high risk in the banking, but also in the non-banking sector. And I can tell you that at the annual meetings of the IMF and, and the World Bank, that issue of the medium long-term accumulation of risks, uh, that was front and center. We are looking into that very carefully because as, as we say right now, don't pull the plug. The economy is slowed. You don't want to create more trouble. Don't pull the uh, low interest uh, rates uh, prematurely. But over time, we do need to concentrate on why interest rates are so low. And basically, it takes us to the issue of low productivity, the demographics in advanced economies. What can be done to address these root causes for our economies to be so willing to take low interest rates for longer.